So here's what it means for the top half of the Premier League table. Then a uh, four-point lead for Liverpool over Manchester City uh, ahead of tomorrow's Manchester derby. Uh, Luis, uh, Frank Leboeuf and Julian Laurent are all with us now. Good to have you boys. Uh, Liverpool, Robbo, this morning, what would you make of them? Uh, they didn't play at their very best. Mm -hmm. uh, Forrest had a couple of chances, 1v1. Uh, the goalkeeper made another couple of good saves. Mm -hmm. They were still the better team by quite some way. Uh, but I saw Forrest play against Manchester United. It was a very similar game where Manchester United had a lot of the ball. Liverpool had a lot of the ball today without creating those really clear-cut chances. But McAllister, I thought, was excellent again today. And it was him that provided the cross for the goal. Uh, good ball into the box. Of course, the referee could have blown the whistle mm -hmm. as it went out to McAllister. Well, if he was Spanish, he probably <laughs> he would have done. <laughs> but it's a good header. Nunez changed the game when he came on, I thought. He yep. looked more powerful. He ran in behind. He went down the sides of defenders. They need him at centre forward more often than not. When, they, when you're able to bring on a Nunez mm -hmm. in a slobber's lie, it completely ch changes the game. We shouldn't be really surprised. Right. Because they, they create different problems. For, for any defence, never mind Nottingham Forest. And as Robbo said, as good as Liverpool were with the ball and they passed it around, you know there's a reason why the strikers get paid a lot more yep. than everybody else? Because of what they do in the final third. And that's why we win the game. 70% possession in this game for Liverpool, just two shots on target. Luis, what would you make of their performance? Yeah, exactly. The guys are totally right. 22 attempts, only two shots on target. The la in the last third, you could see that difference where where is Salah, where is Jota, where is Nunes. These are uh, play, uh, players who can capitalize on any single chance. And when you have some other players who have to work out or they play in different positions, we see Harvey Elliott is more a midfielder than a, a, as a winger. Gapko today struggled so much. We saw him a couple of times into the middle, rushing things up. I think they, they didn't have the composure uh, that he's done in other times. And uh, you could see that with the young players, uh, they, they play once again with Bobby Clark. I think he did a good job. But it still need some players who uh, can, can give that extra. And what you were talking about, Sovosla, he's a player who, when he's on the ball, you know, they can give you an assist, can give you a pass, can strike the ball from long distance. And this make the opponent... And try to, to, to feel the danger and open up a little bit more. It's true. Once again, Liverpool were a little bit lucky. I think Gallagher did a fantastic job when he, he was needed. Uh, but in the end, you could see that Liverpool was going to find a way. Uh, Dance arrived once again, the 18 years old, in the second half, creating a few distractions into the last third and got a couple of good passes. But it was Darwin who made a fantastic header to, to get the three points. I think well deserved for Liverpool because in the end, uh, they, they, they had the desire from the first minute to try to, to create something. Luis, what did you celebrate more? Liverpool's goal or the fact that Real Madrid had one chalked off late? Be honest. I'm going to be honest and I'm going to tell you. With Liverpool, my wife was sleeping so I couldn't shout much. <laughs> she was having a nap. But with Atletico in Madrid, I was watching it with my son and we made a, a couple of jumps. So I, I will say uh, with, uh, with Valencia uh, scoring the first goal. Frank, should we be focused on how Liverpool got the job done today or the fact that with you know, a bunch of academy guys in the lineup, they were able to win away from home? No, I think we have to go easy on uh, on Liverpool's performance today. Uh, after so many games playing in such a, in such a short timing, and, uh, and with the amount of uh, um, uh, injured players that they have and the list that they have, um, it's understandable. Um, at the end of the day, they got the three points. Um, I know after the first half, I said, well, you know, it's going to be the same story. They're going to wake up and they're going to be better. But it didn't happen today. Uh, they struggle until the end. We're going to talk about the controversy about the injury of Konate and maybe the penalty against Gomez. Mess. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, they are lucky and uh, luck is part of the game. And um, when you have that lucky, it's, uh, it's, it's a good sign to, be, uh, to become a champion. That's, uh, that's some uh, tricks that you need on your, in your pocket. So, yeah, they haven't been good, uh, except the, the last, uh, I would say, the defense uh, plus Bradley, the young Bradley, mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 they manage well. But it's true that after, it's, uh, it's very young, it's an experience, but they give, they give what they have to give. And, uh, you know, good for them. Um, they, I think they, mo I would say, deserve to win, even if it's not that convincing. Hmm. In some ways, two wrongs have made a right, because it should have been Liverpool's ball. So if you're Liverpool, you're great, but it's why you didn't get the ball in the first place. Right, should have been a foul. It should have been a free kick. Hmm. So I guess depending on... Uh, where you come from, right. that, that's well, how you look at it. But, but the foul is subjective. The ref's got it wrong here. Right? Yeah, because what the referee should have done, yeah. 
having, having not given the free kick, sure. and he then stops the play because Canate has got a head injury. Mm -hmm. And Forrest and has Forrest the, the ball. The referee should be in control of that. Mm -hmm. It's not up to Liverpool to give the ball back. The referee almost throws yeah. it to, to Nottingham Forest. So yep. the referee didn't take control. You can't blame Liverpool for that. That's up to the referee. Right. Frank, what do you think? Yeah, it's really, um, it's really the referee's mistake. I mean, uh, as, as long as he doesn't give a free kick uh, um, for, for Liverpool and Konate, you have to give the ball back to Nottingham. And again, look at the action. Um, tell me that why did he didn't check Gomez Fowl uh, uh, and, uh, and give a penalty to Nottingham Forest? I mean, I don't understand that action. I don't understand football oh, anymore. Oh, oh, I mean, that, that's crazy. We have... Frankie, Frankie. Well, yeah, OK, go on. Yeah. If, you, if you're going to bring up that, then, then you need to bring up Danilo on Dan's. Mm. You know, we, we sit here every time and talk about consistency. And there's no question Danilo has two arms around Dan. He's pushing him. Dan's falls down. But he doesn't give it. And that's fair enough. So if you're not going to give that, then you absolutely cannot give the one on Joe Gomez. You know, as I said, we sit here and we want consistency. He was 100% consistent mm -hmm. on those two decisions. Frank? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree, totally agree. But, uh, again, it's, it's part of the referees to do their jobs. And uh, you have people, I don't know, in the VAR um, uh, booth, I don't know what they do. Really, I don't know what they do. Because we all saw that. And we all saw that there were two penalties. And, again, if we only go back to that action of Konate, I think... It's not up to Liverpool to give the ball back. It's really the referee to decide who, whether Nottingham Forest has to get the ball back because they had it when the referee stopped the game or Liverpool because of a free, of a free kick. But because he didn't give the free kick, mm. give the ball back to Nottingham Forest. That's only fair. Jules, it uh, happened less than two minutes before the Liverpool goal. Do Nottingham have a, a case for a complaint here? Over the Joe Gomez foul, you mean? Or... No, over the, over, over the fact that the referee gave the ball to Kelleher when it was clearly Forrest Ball and they should have got it. Yeah, I mean, it's a mistake. We, we all agree on that. It's Portini, who, by the way, is having a terrible season. He's a terrible referee this season. There's no doubt. Again, on that, we've, we've said it many <laughs> times on the show. Got that one wrong. But you're right. There's still a long way between the ball, Liverpool getting the ball back when it should have been a Forrest Ball because, because the foul on Konate was not given, as, as, as Stevie just mentioned, there's still, a long, there's still enough time for Forrest to defend better and not concede that goal. Right. So I understand the frustration because no. it's, a, it's, a, it's a game like this. So I can understand the frustration, but, but they could also have defended better on that. It's not, it's not directly that the goal happened. So I, I understand the frustration, but we should never see an, a, an owner on the pitch at full time. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Marinakis, this is his stadium, it's his club, I understand that, but you should never come down and look like you are putting pressure on referees, on people who are there as the, representing the Premier League. This is not a good look. It's not a good look for yourself, for your club, for the league, for anything. You should not come down onto the pitch because you're frustrated that your team lost in the last kick of the game after what was a referee's mistake. Mm. Luis is just laughing about this uh, in Ibiza. Luis, what do you make of it? <laughs> No, to be honest, I understand Jules and what he mentioned, but it's kind of uh, Marinakis come from Olympiacos and I've been playing for Panathinaikos and I've seen that almost every weekend. So that's not something that I'm surprised. Of course, I was surprised <laughs> that it happens in the Premier League, but it's uh, something that they usually do right there. That the uh, presidents, when they are angry with a referee, with a player or with their own team, they go down to the dressing room, they go down to the pitch and they make uh, whatever they want to do, I would uh, say, because that's, that, that's the way they, they, they think and they have their culture. But um, I, just to say something about that, it's true, but imagine if there is a throw-in that touched one of the players and the referee got it a mistake, and two minutes after, uh, Liverpool uh, makes the, the goal. They are going to complain about the mistake of the referee not giving the, free, the, the throw-in to to their, their team, to Nottingham Forest. This is a kind of mistake. It's true that there are four officials who can make and talk to the referee and say, listen, the ball is to Nottingham Forest because they had the ball. It's a mistake, but I think it goes through for, for two, three minutes until the goal arrives. So, yeah, it's a mistake, but nothing to say, mm. nothing more to say about that. Does the amount of time, Robbo, does that impact how you look at it? A little bit, yeah. It's not as if they got the ball and went straight right. up the other end and, and scored the goal, and then they would have been, uh, or should have been, really upset. 
But it wasn't so long ago we were talking about more respect for referees. And mm. They shouldn't have players all around the referee, coaches coming on the field, a chairman now coming down from mm -hmm. the stands. I think it's got worse. Really? It's, it's certainly got worse. There's, there's been no respect for referees. They make mistakes mm -hmm. and we all have a go at them. But as a, as a football, uh, you know, football clubs, players, officials, you can't do what we're seeing at the moment. It, happened, it, it happens in a lot of games now. Yeah. Stevie, final thought? I don't think it's got worse. I'd certainly hope that the... Well, you usually go home certainly... as soon as the final yeah. whistle goes. I'm still there, commentating. Yeah, I, don't... <laughs> I, I think absolutely 100% the chairman and the owner right. has to get some sort, of, some sort of fine or ban or whatever it is because that cannot happen. Mm -hmm. it's, one thing, it's one thing for it's coaching TV. staff and players to complain and I understand that you shouldn't be doing it. But for the owner to be coming down, no, they've got, to, they've got to clamp down on that right now. Quickly, Sharp. Frank, go ahead. Uh, yes, I think I can say to Stevie uh, that it got worse. I mean, I come from France, and when you, you go to England and you, you know that you will have to play in England, you know, uh, or I knew, that at my time, you couldn't say anything to the referee. That was part of the culture, part of the education. When the, play, when the, the referee says something, even if he made, makes a mistake, you don't answer to him and you don't uh, uh, complain about anything. That was the picture that we had about the Premier League. It's not that anymore, mm. from far. Maybe because some European, maybe some French people came over <laughs> and disturbed the etiquette. <laughs> Luis, what does this mean for Liverpool as far as the title race, getting a, a victory in this way? No, it's, a, it's, a, it's another boost. It's to keep the momentum. I think it was very important uh, just to keep at the top of the table, show that even in the, the worst moment of injuries, not having all the players ready, uh, to, to, to get a consistent uh, win once again and to, to keep that not only because now it's coming the, the Europa League, they're going to need their best, they're going to need to continue rotating and they manage to keep on going. I think the momentum is, is fantastic, the confidence on the players, they believe because it's not the first time that the, this Liverpool side scored a goal in the last 10 or in the last five minutes. So that shows that in the end, everyone has to be ready for when Liverpool plays against you for uh, give the 100% from the first minute until the 96 because Liverpool is going to continue drilling until they find the way of, of, of the net. So, yeah, big, big three points for Liverpool to maintain the momentum. If you want to, if you want to take this a certain way, you can say that Liverpool now can go to Man City and get beat and still be sitting top of the Premier League. That that's, certainly won't be the that's messaging, the difference. right? That's the difference between Liverpool winning today and taking a point. Mm. So it's massive as far it's as the title huge, race is It's absolutely concerned. huge. Huge. Yeah. People like Arteta and the Arsenal and the Arsenal fans will all be looking at that. We, obviously, Steve, we talking about Man City. I'd look at an Arsenal point of view. Arsenal would be thinking with a, with a couple of minutes to go, rubbing their hands, mm -hmm. you know, we've got every chance of catching up with Liverpool now. It's not the case. They've right. now got to go and put another performance in. They've got yeah. to go and win the game just to stay in touch. Does it bother you at all that Liverpool are kind of just getting it over the line while Arsenal are just Couldn't ripping people care apart? Less. City are capable of putting up five. Couldn't care less. It's not about playing, no. It's not about style. It's mm -hmm. not about patterns of play. It's not about... All the lovely, lovely passing from the back. But compared to the teams I that you're fighting for less. that title, it I is. I couldn't care less mm -hmm. if, whether it's Kelleher or Alisson in goal, mm -hmm. every time he takes a, go a goal kick or gets the ball, if he kicks it 70 yards down the field and Liverpool win 1-0 with a flick on. Mm -hmm. I couldn't care less. This time of the year <laughs> is about winning games. Mm -hmm. That's it. Luis, what are you laughing at? <laughs> no, nothing. It's no, totally true. Mean. I think that uh, right now, with all, all the injuries and everything that is happening, it's about getting a three points. Keep on going. Keep on the top and putting yeah. pressure to the other team because now they don't have to wait and see. They need to get the, the result and wait and see. So I think that is, is a massive and huge moment for Liverpool to, to win the three points today against Nottingham Forest. Not an easy team. Go on, Frank. I hear you chuckling. No, 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 I was laughing because that is, it's really true what Stevie just said. You know, I remember at my time, and Shaka can talk about that, when Newcastle had 14 points ahead and Manchester started to win, you know, 1-0 at the end, 1-0. We all talk about the Fergie time, and it's really what it is. You know, you don't care about the way you play, and Manchester United wasn't playing, weren't playing well every time they, they played, but they were getting the three points, and it's what matters the most. Um, so it's why I was talking about the luck that you need because that's what it is. 
That's what it is. You know, a last cross, a last header, and the last goal at the last minute. That's perfect. You go home, you're happy, you get the three points, and you think about the next game.